Look, uh, this may not sound like an instant classic, but I think it's worth listening to. Continue. It's a summer's day, just when primetime news is about to start. All of a sudden, the Brooklyn Bridge is stopped by traffic by a bunch of soldiers. And for us to see this should only cost us a million and a half dollars. We're just gonna put two tanks on one side of the bridge and put like 20 extra soldiers on the other, all right? Uh, don't overestimate things, Scott. You're always thinking of the bigger picture. Uh, before we move on, I have a little bit of a problem with the whole prime time thing. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, coups usually happen at night or more toward morning. This is show business. He needs to show the people there's a coup and prime time is the best time for this. Touche, touche. Harry, are you sure that two tanks and 20 extras are enough to make it look like a coup? And only one side of the bridge? They don't want to take up traffic, Scott. Do you know what this coup would do if it's stuck in traffic? Uh, yeah, in fact, you know, my grandmother always said that a hungry person that's caught in traffic could be capable of almost anything. Oh, there was no such thing as traffic in your grandmother's time, Brian. Your wagon. Then the TV network is raided, and the newsmen read the coup manifesto. What about the others? The others are starting their other broadcasts. I think we need to work on this part. It does not seem realistic enough. Everyone should be able to watch this live, Judith, from all channels. Live from the Brooklyn Bridge. Chaos ensues. A militia is gathering. But how are people who are watching it live going to help? I mean, is it any different than watching a movie? <sighs> Look, it's not just going to be about uh, uh, watching the coup live. Our dictator will draw and rally people into the streets. Wait, is he going to go on live TV when everybody's out looking for him? Actually, he's going to use FaceTime. I just want to intervene. Is it not going to look really weird? I mean, an anchor man holding a phone in his hand with the president on FaceTime? The camera angle would be terrible and his face would be all jumbled up. Uh, yeah, and, and where exactly is the president during this whole FaceTime thing? He's on Air Force One. The special forces raid his hotel before he gives him the slip. The special forces can't find him in the hotel? They're running a little late. See, the special forces, before the president gives them the slip, can't find the address of the hotel, so they ask a cab driver for directions. That's pretty good. I like that, okay? The special forces asking a cab driver for directions? I mean, that's gonna be like a cult moment in action movies. Come on. Okay, I'm confused. What's the president actually doing on FaceTime? He's calling people to the streets on FaceTime. He's rallying the people together in order to jump in front of the tanks and start stuffing t-shirts into their exhaust pipes. To the civilian population? I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, stuffing t-shirts in the exhaust pipe of what, the tanks? Okay. I, I think what you're trying to do here is forge a loyal backbone. But Harry, have you ever seen a tank's exhaust pipe? Never seen one. That's because you can't. It, it's always guarded by soldiers. Believe me, if it were like that, there wouldn't be such huge budgets in the defense industry for anti-tank weapons. Scott, for the sake of the story, people need to feel like they accomplished something. I understand that. But I don't think we can accomplish that just by shoving t-shirts up tank exhaust pipes. Okay, well, what's next? Are they going to start throwing rocks at F-16s? What else is happening? 